Today I'd like to go ahead and show you some tips and tricks I use for uh, retouching this log cabin in Lightroom CC and I'll be using Lightroom CC Classic. So this was taken over in Frisco, Colorado and this is a shot of the old mining cabins that they have in the area. They basically restored them and what they do every winter they go ahead and decorate these cabins with some cool looking Christmas lights. So I decided to go on over there and see if I can capture some of these at night. And I brought my LED light. So to take this photograph real quick, let me just sh show you the information on it. So some of the settings I used to capture this, I had my, first off I had my camera on a tripod and I was using a remote. And I finally settled on two and a half seconds. My aperture was at 7.1. So I always try to keep my aperture at 7.1 or above when I'm shooting these kind of photographs with lots of light. If you start going below that 7.1 aperture, that's when you're gonna start seeing your pictures not being so sharp. So that's a good little tip for you guys. And my ISO was at 400. With the newer cameras, if you're shooting with full frame, you can usually push your ISO way high up and you won't get much noise on your photographs. A lot of the other cameras, I would recommend trying to keep your ISO as low as possible to keep minimum noise on your photographs. So for this particular camera, I decided just to keep it at ISO 400, which worked out really good. I was shooting with my Tokiton 11 by 16 millimeter lens. I just love this lens. I use it all the time. And I finally settled at 14 millimeter for cropping the shot. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me go through the process of how I went and uh, retouched this. And one thing you might notice is there's like this blue kind of glow going on here. So one reason I wanted to try to get a longer exposure is I wanted to use my LED handheld flashlight. And I figured two and a half seconds was just enough time when I hit that remote that I could take my LED and quickly light up the trees and a little bit of the snow on the side here. And the effect turned out really cool looking. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit reset on this and I'm gonna show you what the raw file looked like. So here's what the raw file looked like. And there's quite a bit of difference from the original there. So I'm gonna go through the whole process from start to finish for retouching this. So the first thing I wanna do is let's come over to the highlights and the shadows right here. And the highlights on this shot, I'm not going to take down really that far. I'm probably going to go to about negative 22. And then my shadows, I'm going to go ahead and bring up to about 80, 80 to 87. I think 87 looks pretty good. Now I want to do is just bring the whites out just a little better and the blacks. So right here where it's white. I'm going to go ahead and hold my option key on my Mac, which is Alt on your PC. I'm going to click down. I'm going to go to the white, and I'm actually going to burn the white. So as you see those white specks there, those are the Christmas lights. I'm trying to burn those through a little bit just to make them look, pop a little bit better. And then I'm going to go to the blacks here. Once again, I'm going to pull that to the negative, and I'm going to just bring that down just to make the black areas a little more black there. Okay, next let's come down to clarity here. I do want to bump this up. So let's go to about, eh, let's go 16 on that one. The vibrance, I'm going to pull this one up a little bit. 12 and my saturation. I think I'm going to take that up to about 12 or 14 looks pretty good. Now, one thing I notice when I'm doing this here, especially under the saturation, you have a little less manual control when you just use this bar only. But I'm kind of doing is a little shortcut here to kind of speed up the process and to show you different types of workflows I do here. So one problem I am noticing is starting to get that really orangey, yellowy look here. So I'm actually going to be fixing that down below here. So I'm going to scroll on down and under the toolbar HSL color and black and white, I want to make sure I am under saturation. I'm going to come down here where it says yellow and I want to do is take some of the yellow out. So I'm going to go down negative to where I think it looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to take it right about there to about negative 30. Okay, now I want to do is scroll on down to sharpening. So since I got very little noise in this photograph, I want to really sharpen this building up. 
So I'm going to take sharpening and I'm going to bump this all the way up to about 73. But one trick here that works really good to where I'm not sharpening everything on here. I really want to just sharpen the main building here and the trees. So I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to hold my option key, which is your alt key on your PC. Under masking, I'm going to click and I'm going to pull this to the right and I'm going to keep going. So everything in white will be sharpened where everything in black will not be sharpened. So I'm going to take it to right about there and let go. Now it's going to make the picture pop even that much more. Now scrolling down under noise reduction, since there is very little noise in this picture, I think I'll only bring this up to probably about, eh, let's go about 21 with that one. Now I was using the wide angle lynch, which tends to distort a lot of things. I want to do under enable profile correction. I'm going to click that box and we're under the lens correction tab here. So if you just click on that tab under lens correction, you'll find this right here. So I enabled my profile correction. And as you see, as I click it on and off, there's a big difference. It kind of helps flatten the outer part of the picture here really good. Now, for some reason, if you ever do click this and that nothing comes up, sometimes you can do is go ahead and just click under the make here. And you just, once you click that, you can go ahead and find your model right there. Now under the transform tab here, I want to do is just flatten this building out a little better so I'm gonna hit auto which works a lot of times and this time it worked really good so as you can see the difference here there's before and there's after so once again when you are using wide-angle lenses you're gonna see a more dramatic effect when using these tabs right here now when you scroll down to effects here I do want to do is bump up the highlight priority and I'm only gonna take it to probably a two or a three and what I'm doing, so here, let me show you something here. Let me pull it way in. So that's a major plus, and this is the major negative. So you can, you can actually do some pretty neat effects with this. If you really want to make it more like a Christmas card effect or something. Too. But I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ever so slightly on this. So I just want just a, a faint light flow kind of going around the edges here. It just kind of gives the picture a little more soft feel to it. Under dehaze, I always like using this one, so I'm gonna pop this up to about eight. Now there's a couple things I need to fix on this photograph. So one thing I do have, if I zoom in, I do have this lens flare right here. This is the only one that did come off the lens there. So to fix that, I'm gonna come over here to the spot removal tool, which is located right here. Click on it once. Now I'm gonna scroll over to the location of the lens flare here, and I'm just gonna kinda of roll my wheel to the size I wanna fix, and I'm gonna click once. And what it's gonna do is gonna try to find something that's kinda of similar, and it blends it in. So this actually doesn't do too bad, so if I wanna adjust it just a little bit, I can move it up and down, or to a certain position. But I'm not going to get super critical with this one for the fact that it is kind of far back in a picture and it's really hard to even notice it in the first place. So I'm going to hit done. Let me zoom out. And by zooming out, I mean everything just blends in perfectly. You don't even notice it one whatsoever there. Okay, the last couple things I want to do is just kind of make things pop just a little bit better. So I'm going to come over here to the radio filter. Click that once. I do want to make sure just my exposure is up just a little bit. So I might just, let me run it to about 38 and I'm going to bump up my clarity just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and make a little box just around the front here or a circle. And as you can see, as I increase it or decrease it, it has a pretty dramatic effect to the building. So I'm going to just kind of adjust it where I think it looks good. And I think under highlights here, I'm going to drop the highlights down just a little more. And once I'm happy with that, I can hit done. But there's a couple more things I want to do. So let me hit radio filter one more time. I think I'm going to just add one on the side here. Just to kind of give it a little more life over here. A little, just to make a pop. And then I want to add one out here in the snow too. Just to give it a cool looking effect here. Just do it ever so gently. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to grab the graduated filter located right here. It looks like a little box. Click that once. 
And I want to do is I'm just going to light up this tree area here a little bit. So let me just kind of take this and I'm going to drag it over, bring it on down a little bit. And as you can see, it dramatically brightens this up. And I'm going to bump up the clarity just a little bit more right there also. So I feel good about that. I'm going to hit done. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the before and after shot here. So as you can see, this was the before and this was the after. I only did a few things to really touch this one up, but it actually makes it pop quite a bit more. Just doing a, you know, just a little things here and there on it. So anyways, I hope this uh, video helped you out. You got some good tips out of it. Uh, be sure to subscribe. I got some really good videos coming down the pipeline here. And be sure to check out my channel on some of the other videos there. You have yourself a really good day.